Hey everyone, I'm Jenny Sauer. I'm a mobile solutions specialist here at the USDA APHIS PPQ and User Tools Group, and this is a continuation of the video series introducing you to the ArcGIS Field Maps application. This segment will talk about collecting data, which means that we've already gone over and feel very comfortable with a disconnected workflow, and we have a map area downloaded ready for use. Let's get started. First things first, don't forget about the Mobile Data Collection Tools webpage and the resources there for you, especially under this General Training Documents heading, honing in on ArcGIS field maps. If we go ahead and click on this, we get another page, and listed on this page are several things, including ArcGIS field maps. Have a look at the ArcGIS Field Maps Getting Started Guide for more information on collecting data. This video is going to hone in on co the collecting piece of the puzzle, which is outlined here for you in detail. Let's have a look at what that looks like from the iPad. If you've been following along in this video series, you might recall in the Downloading a Map Area series, we signed into the production portal and downloaded a map area for the EWBBB map. Our official production maps are for official data collection only, so I want to get out of this and get into a training map, which means I'm going to go back to the main map menu, open my profile, and sign right out. So bear with me while I sign out of the production portal and into the stage portal to access a training map area. All right, that didn't take too long. I'm going to show you a different map that I happen to have offline areas for the EGM trapping or European Gypsy Moth trapping map. If you're ever in question and you wander out to the field to collect data, if you see the word training, you know you're in the stage portal and you need to sign out. Sign out a stage, sign into production to collect official data. This is for the purposes of training and it's just a little exercise in showing you how things work. So we're in the training map and that is okay. I'm going to open this European Gypsy Moth map. I created a downloaded map area. I named it for my location and the level of detail. Let's open that up. You probably noticed right away this map looks different. For instance, the map download we did for EWBBB. The imagery base map was different. This is just Scott Street's and points of interest labeled. Other th uh, some other things could be different. For instance, how the data form opens up, the first question might be a trap type or it might be a trap status. In the case of Gypsy Moth, opening the data form with this plus sign starts the questions off with whether the trap is an active trap or an inactive trap. That could be different depending on your pest program. Although I'll show you the basics of what to expect and the functions within field maps, your map could look a little different. Some other things to point out, I'll cancel that. This is your sync button, and right now with no edits, there's only just a plain in and out arrow. Once you've submitted some edits, you'll get a little dot right below the out arrow, which is helpful in seeing that you have edits to sync. This is the layers menu. You can see that there's a reference layer here for 2021 trap sites, which is defaulted to off. If you wanna see that, you can turn it on. I'll turn that back off. The markup layer is also currently defaulted to off, which is fine. We have another video that covers the markup layer and some of its uses, which you might want to check out. The markup layer can be located for editing and making notes in, in this overflow menu. So if I tap these three dots, I get a menu. Perhaps your map has another base map that you could toggle to. You could create some bookmarks. You can also use this option to edit multiple sites if needed. The legend is a good one to check out. If you tap the legend, it will show you the symbology involved in the map layers that are currently visible. You can see there's two symbols there, active or inactive. The markup layer is right there for access and use. There's a measure tool and there's an option to share the map if that's something you need to do. Tapping this plus button will open a data form and tapping that plus button also asks you for your GPS to work double time to locate you. This messaging up at the top in blue is the GPS accuracy, which is attempting to find me even though I'm in the basement. Standard GPS requirements for field maps are within 30 feet. So it is falling within that 30 feet, which means this message is blue. If I am not receiving good GPS accuracy, this messaging turns red. Let's go ahead and tap this 
plus sign. That immediately puts a crosshairs over my location. And because the GPS accuracy is meeting its requirement, this crosshair has a blue circle around it. If not meeting GPS accuracy, that circle turns red as well as this messaging up here. So we have a first question of whether this trap is active or inactive. I'll pick active and that opens the data form. A couple things about the data form. Required fields are followed by a gray asterisk. So you know those fields are required to be filled out. Tapping and pulling up scrolls down in your data form, and not all fields may be required. For instance, this trap site comments is not a required field. Scrolling back up to the top, you would fill this form out according to survey protocol. I'm going to give it some test points, so I'll say test and I think I'm on number four, so I'll use the keyboard to fill that out. If the next question also uses the keyboard, you have this option of next just to toggle right on down. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Trap ID, this again would be survey protocol, which I don't know, so I'm gonna go ahead and keep it consistent, test four. Trap type didn't open the keyboard, but gives you an option to choose from. Tap to choose. If you've chosen incorrectly, tap in the box again, to reopen the list and change your option. You can see kind of a little pattern here with the way it's set up, right? Some fields are also automatically defaulted to the most common. In this case, agency is one of those, and USDA APHIS is chosen, but if I tap that, I can change it to state cooperator. I'm gonna leave that alone and hit done. I'll just quickly fill out some of these. I'm going to skip that. Typically PPQ maps have the install date or any date at the very bottom to help prevent accidental changes to the date. At the end of completing a survey form, always scroll up to the top, check all your work, be sure the answers make sense and they've been typed properly, be sure all required fields are filled out. You'll want a blue circle around yourself, you'll want to be sure that GPS accuracy is being met, and you can go ahead and tap this blue submit. Now we have a difference here in our sync button where we've got a little dot right under the outgoing arrow that's indicating to us that an edit is now living on our device that needs to be sent out during our daily data sync. Be sure to check out the daily data sync video, which outlines syncing our data back to our hosted map service. Some maps also have something called a related table. Be sure to check out the guide for more information on this. This is one of those maps, and the thinking on it is that for instance with a trapping survey, you might visit once to locate a trap and record a data form on all of that location. But then you may visit many times the same site. So each visit is recorded in a related table as an activity. In the case of Gypsy Moth, the related activity can be accessed using this little link icon at the bottom, or by scrolling up and locating that link icon here, you can see it's named EGM Activities 2022. In order to record a trap activity, you'll have to have that trap symbol selected on the map. In this case, because we've just recorded that trap placement, the symbol remains selected. If I tap anywhere on the map, it deselects. Let's record a trap activity on this trap. First, I will select that trap symbol. You can see it it gets a blue halo around the symbology on the map and the data form opens in view only form. I can either hit this link button or this link button to access the activity table. A big hint that this is training data is capitalized messaging, <laughs> training data only. That's what we want because we're just demonstrating. In order to add an activity, tap the blue add button and a small form appears for you to fill out on that activity. And we have default entries. This defaults to monitor, which I'm okay with, but if I wanted to change, I could do so. A field sample ID could be taken. I'll record my name and I'm gonna leave comments blank and complete the date which is again today. Again, as with any form, I will check over the form to be sure I've entered everything accurately and that all required fields are entered. And even for this trap activity, I must submit it. So I'll hit submit. And that's data collection in a nutshell. Mm -hmm.